In this video, you're looking at Beaver Dam, uh, and you're looking at the spillway at Beaver Dam. Beaver Dam has seven tainer gates, and throughout this video, all seven gates are going to be open. I got this video from the Little Rock District Corps of Engineers Facebook page. In this video, I'm going to talk about how the releases from spillways are determined. I think that most people understand that releases from spillways are made when the reservoir gets high, when there's been a lot of rainfall, but it may not be very well understood about what actually is used to make the determination on when to open the spillway gates and also how much to open those spillway gates. So there's a few different methods that we can use, and for the most part, the methods involve curves. Now, these curves will typically relate um, reservoir parameters to a required release. So, and here you can see we're moving to, from having two gates open to three gates open. So, in one case, the parameters might be how quickly the pool is rising. So, we may look at what is the elevation of the reservoir and how quickly the reservoir is rising. And that can be used to make the determination on uh, how much we should open up the spillway gates. In other case, it could be that we compute the inflow that's coming into the reservoir and also look at the reservoir elevation. And from there, make a determination on how much it should be open. In some cases, the method is just simply stop the rise that's occurring in the reservoir. So in order to do that, we would then open up the spillway gates until the outflow is equal to the inflow. The method that I'm going to discuss deals with what's called an induced surcharge envelope curve. And that's basically a curve that will relate the uh, reservoir pool elevation and the release. And I have other videos that go in to show how those curves are developed. So I'm not really going to talk about how the curves are developed, but I do have schematics with the spillway that will show how we use those curves and how we uh, uh, make the determination on when and how much to release. So one thing I do want to define is what is an induced surcharge? So an induced surcharge just means that you're forcing extra storage. So you're forcing or inducing extra storage or surcharge. And you force extra storage by opening these gates. And as you open a gate, you have a higher top of gate elevation, which means that if you're trying to avoid having the gates being over top, you now have a higher elevation that the pool can rise to, which means that you um, have forced or induced extra storage. But as you can see from this video, that obviously as you're opening the gates, you have a higher top of uh, gate elevation. However, you are releasing flow underneath the gate. And here you can see that we just got to the point where we have all seven spillway gates in effect at Beaver Dam, which means that we are uh, having an induced surcharge operation. So now I'm going to go into this induced surcharge envelope curve along with the schematics that show how these curves relate to different spillway openings. And I'm not going to go into too much detail about these, uh, this curve because I do a lot more detail in other videos. But the one thing that I do want to point out, by the way, it's the red curve and it's plotted on uh, this plot where you have reservoir water surface elevation on the y axis and discharge on the x axis. So you can see that it is this relationship between discharge and water surface elevation. The definition of this curve is that it's the maximum reservoir elevation for a given discharge. And to use this curve, it tends to be an iterative process because what you're doing is you're developing this inflow forecast from known rainfall, or typically from known rainfall. And you're also developing a proposed release schedule well, you put those two together and you have inflow and outflow. So if you do inflow minus outflow, you get change in storage, which can ultimately lead to the change in your pool elevation, which will give you uh, the peak pool elevation that the pool will rise to. 
So if you perform that computation and you have a peak pool elevation and a peak pool release and it puts you somewhere about right here, you're above the induced surcharge envelope curve, which means that you have to do another iteration because you want to be on or below that curve. And so if you increase your release, and remember increasing your release is going to move you to the right since discharge or release is on the x-axis. And as you increase your release, you're going to drop your pool elevation with a larger release. And so you keep iterating until you get on or below that line, the, the red line or the induced surcharge envelope curve. So now we can look at this spillway schematic. And here I've, I've taken a, a little snip of the uh, envelope curve and tried to blow it up. So if we go through that computation where we have forecasted inflow and proposed release, and we come up with a pool elevation that's shown by this blue dot, it might be somewhere here. And you can see that there's really no reason to open up the spillway gate in this case. We're not at the top of the spillway gate, which by the way, this point on the envelope curve is the top of the flood pool, and that oftentimes corresponds to the top of the spillway gate when it's in its closed position. It doesn't always, but for the purposes of this video, we will assume that that's the case. So here you can see this is the top of the spillway gate, and it is in its closed position. You can see that the lip of the spillway gate is resting on the spillway. And you can see that this water surface elevation is not near the top of the spillway gate. That's why it's plotting below this point. In fact, you can see that this water surface elevation is not even at the crest of the spillway. So I would say that in this case, you don't really have a reason to open up the spillway gate. Now, if you get more inflow and the pool rises, you can see that we've gotten closer to the top of the spillway gate in its closed position, and that's shown by this dot also, but it's not quite on that, that curve yet, right? So if this is where we peaked out, we may be okay with not opening the spillway gate. However, this is letting us know that if it continues to rise, we are going to have to open up the spillway gate. So let's assume that we got more inflow. You can see here that now we are getting onto this curve, and so it'd be hard to see from this dot, but we did move somewhat to the left and moved up, and you could see it from the, from the previous slide that your water surface elevation did rise and your release, now you are releasing some flow, and you have a higher top of gate elevation. One other thing I want to point out about this curve is that in the early part of this curve, that the, the slope is steeper, which means that for any given unit change in elevation, you have a smaller change in release than you do when you get to this part of the curve, this flatter part of the curve. And the reason for that is, is that these elevations here are going to be more common and we're trying to still provide some benefit for the more common events or for the more frequent events. As we start to get to this part of the curve, the event becomes much more severe. So we do have to be careful about uh, dam safety issues. And so in this case, with each unit change in elevation, we are going to have a greater change in release. Here you can see we've moved further along on this curve. And again, I opened up the spillway gate a little bit more, the pool elevation rose, and we also had an increase in our release. So this point has moved somewhat to the right and it's moved up, but we're actually still on the envelope curve, which means that we are okay. Remember, if we plotted above in one of our iterations, we would have to increase our release until we get down to the curve. Here you can see that we've now moved further along the curve and we're starting to get into this flat part. So in this case, you can see that we've had a more significant increase in our uh, spillway gate opening. Our pool elevation has risen and also the release that's going underneath the gate has also increased. Finally, we get to the point where we have a fully open spillway gate. 
And that's, you can see this line here that says gates fully open. Now, there's a couple of things that can determine when the gates are fully open. And one of them is just a very simple uh, logistical issue. Sometimes, you know, you need to have equipment access to get these gates open. Sometimes it might be a catwalk to get to uh, the equipment for opening these gates. And at some point that catwalk can become flooded. So before it becomes impassable, you want to make sure that you get the gates fully open. That in itself can be a dam safety issue, but there can also be other dam safety issues that require you to have the gates fully open once you get to this point. Now, whenever we think about reservoirs and releases, we tend to think about downstream areas, but as the lake gets high, we can also get upstream flooding. So that can also be a determination on when the gates are fully open. So one other thing that I wanted to point out in this video is there seems to be a misconception that when spillway gates are open, that we've dumped a bunch of stored water. Now I, I use other videos to go into the different methods of reservoir operations and also to discuss why reservoirs actually do get full at times, but I do wanna to try to uh, provide a little bit of information about that misconception. So just as, let's say you have a bank account and your bank account rises, it means that you have more coming in than is going out. It's really no different with the reservoir. So if you look at these schematics as we go through time, we are, in this case, you had a rise. We didn't open the spillway gate. But in this case, we do open the spillway gate. And one thing to notice is that the pool continued to rise even though we did have an opening of the spillway gate. So in that case, we're not dumping a bunch of stored water. In fact, it's just the opposite that we're actually continuing to store a portion of the inflow that's coming into the reservoir at that time, which means that we're still providing some benefit. And you can see again that as we continue to open the gate more, we're doing this with a rising pool elevation, which means that we still are providing some benefit that we still are capturing a portion of the inflow. So actually it's not until the lake starts to drop that our outflow will be exceeding our inflow. So keep that in mind. If you think that a bunch of stored water has been dumped, just go and look at the record of what's happening at the pool elevation during the time of interest. And if the pool elevation is rising, that stored water is not being dumped, it's a portion of the inflow will still be captured. Um, and basically your outflow will be less than your inflow if the pool is rising. So I hope that that helps you understand about um, how spillway releases are determined. If you found this video to be helpful, feel free to subscribe to the channel and you'll get notified when other videos of this type come out. And thanks for watching this one.